And so you watch the movie for the very first time, and as soon as it's over, your first thought is what? I can't believe that we just watched this, and it reminded me of how far we've come. It just really shocked me to see it um, happen in front of me where I think how quickly we could have lost everything by one decision or you know an opportunity. It just was fascinating to me to watch um, it all out in screen and someone that looks like me, someone that looks like him. It was weird. It was beautiful but weird. And, and for me it was like going back and that was kind of the first thing I thought is you've lived this and it seemed like so long ago and then you kind of freeze for a moment and go, holy cow. I mean, that, you, you think back to all of those different moments that you've almost forgotten along the way, and the emotions kind of start to take over again. And you're like, wow, it has been an incredible journey that we've been on. And oftentimes, I think when you live it, you forget all about that, and everybody else sees it. And it was a time for us, I think, to step back and go, man, it's, it's, it's amazing where we're at now and, and what we've been through and that we've been able to do it together. How much contact did you have with the people who portrayed you? I thought it was really important that Zachary yep. look like a football player. Were you involved? Very involved. Uh, yeah, that was one of the key components. And we've seen all the little blurbs on social media about people that have tried to throw a football before. And, and I think oftentimes in a movie like this, you can lose people by going, oh, that doesn't look anything like you know, a football player. So that was definitely part of uh, when he first came he came for about three days uh, when he was cast for the movie, and we went out in the backyard and threw the football around, and I gave him a little pointers here and there. Um, and then at the same time, you take a step back and go, well, this is still an actor that hasn't ever played football, so to expect him to portray an NFL quarterback is not an easy thing to do. But it was fun to have him around the family and, and feeling out our dynamic um, and being able to apply all of that to his role. Did you think when you were looking at Zachary, at least for a stretch, that that was Kurt on the big screen? It's freaky. It's kind of freaky. And even looking at him today, um, when I see him, I'm like, it, it makes me feel kind of weird because I'm so attracted to Kurt. So to have another man look so much like him, it's a little odd. But he did really look like him in the movie. We, we would send little videos or pictures, you know, when we were on the movie set, back to the kids. And the kids would say that, like, oh my gosh, that looks just like you, yeah. Dad. So I, I think that part is cool because it really captures even those that are close to the story because... They do look so much like us. The most powerful part of the movie, I thought, was the portrayal when you lost your parents in the tornado. And at the time, at least in the movie, you two were not a couple. How important was that tragedy in bringing you two together? Well, we had been dating four years, and he still hadn't decided, decided if I was the one. So um, when this happened, it just kind of put things in perspective. What's important? What do I want? Are you going to be along for this ride? So it was more a shift in him. I knew he was mine. I knew he was going to be that guy for me. But, you know, it wasn't evidently easy to date me and know that I was supposed to be his wife. So it, it shook things after four years for you. Well, and especially, you know, when we met a college kid that's dreaming about playing in the NFL. And we get together and, you know, great relationship. But the seriousness of it didn't really take shape until... A moment like that and you think back to the movie when the conversation between me and her dad and just I need to make sure that you're here to take care of them not just Brenda and not just be in a relationship with her but the kids along with it and so the weight of that I think really shook me to go all right you need you need to figure this out right here you need to make a decision on whether you know you're gonna you're gonna finish this whole deal you're gonna take care of them and you're gonna move forward or if it's more about all that other stuff. And so that was a key moment for me in a lot of different ways to really settle me and go, all right, figure this thing out right now because you've got a family here that needs you or needs someone uh, to step in and, and, and help them move forward. The most diabolical character in the movie was Mike Marks. And as you've written about in the book, it was true. He really was brutal. Yeah, he, he, he was. And I thought, you know, the character that played Mike and... Uh, just the whole dynamic between me and, and Mike in the movie was really, really well done. And uh, it was. It was key in a lot of different ways to my development. And for me to get ready for that role was Mike having to, to ride me a little bit. And I remember the conversation we had once I became the starter, and he basically just said, there was no way for us to know or to put you under the pressure you're going to face when you actually get behind center in the NFL. So... We had to do everything we could to put as much pressure on you as possible 
just to see if you could handle that and for us to feel comfortable putting you in that role. So it wasn't, wasn't fun. I remember a number of conversations calling from training camp going, Brenda, I don't think I'm any good. Like, I, I don't think I'm going to make this team because all I could hear in practice was, you're, you're awful, you got to do this better, you got to do that better. Um, but it was, I think it was a really great part of the movie and, and my development and my growth both as a person and as a player through that relationship. One of the stars of the movie is Zach. He was the great uniter in this relationship, wasn't he? He was. I remember when we would um, be dating about a year and we would have a fight and get ready to break up and Kurt would say, well, I get the kids. I get the kids. And I'm like, no, you don't get the kids from a single mom. You just don't. So Zach, our, our boy, he really made the difference in, in our life. He fell in love with Kurt and Kurt fell in love with him from the moment they met. You know, Rick Riley had the great line in SI in one of the first national articles about you that most people who meet, who meet a woman in a bar and find out they have a special needs child, they go out the bathroom window. You marry her. And she was brutally honest right from the start. Didn't try to hide anything. And I think that was, that was key for me because it, it put it in perspective, A, who Brenda was. I think that was key in our relationship was you know, you're in college and you're doing the college scene. And to me, what intrigued me about her was that she was so different. And part of that was her just coming out and going, okay, this is who I am. This is what I've been through. This is what comes with me. Either figure it out right now or get out of here because I don't have time, uh, you know, to, to, to wait. I don't have time to waste in this particular situation. So um, that was very key. And it really, again, it, it makes you sit back and think about, okay, what – What's most important? What, what do I want out of life? And, uh, you know, for so long it was football, football, football. That's all I was focused on. She helped me to grow into a complete person and, and go that there's more to life than just football. As much as I want football, there's more to life than just football. And I became a, a more well-rounded person because of our relationship and because of the way that she challenged me. So I know you are both too gracious to say anything negative about the Rams, but the big story in St. Louis right now is the lawsuit. And there's talk now that instead of a settlement, there could be a team. I want you to address this because you lived it. Is this a great football city and you think the NFL could work here? You first, Brenda. Well, you know what? I don't like football. So I have no opinion about <laughs> a football team, but I know this community. And I remember from day one feeling like we were part of it. I remember putting a call out for um, people to donate coats for those in need and the city showed up. They still do 21 years later. I mean, this city was amazing the way they, I remember parking the car for Rams games and just the feeling of a community while you're walking into the stadium and just everybody supporting um, this team, that was a special time. To me, what, what I realized in, in football along the way was that great football towns or great sports towns are about the community. They're about people coming out and supporting and being a part of and being connected to the teams that they have. And there was no place. I mean, we had love in different places that we were, but St. Louis was so special in the way that they supported us, the way they supported the team. What we did in that period of time that, uh, that we were here, there's no doubt that this is a great sports town. And they were a great football town when we were here. And I would love to see St. Louis have a football team and continue to support them the way that they supported us. All right, before we let you go, quick ones you can't hedge on any of these. You look like you're in great shape. If you play one football game right now, what would your stats be? They'd be really good. Um, I don't know. I'd probably go for about 300, complete about 70% of my passes. We'd be all right. Would you let him play one more game? No. <laughs> one more? No Just hedging. One. No. What quarterback in history would you like to trade their skill set with for just one year? That's a great question. Um, Lamar Jackson. You like to try, I'd like to try that just one time, <laughs> see what that feels like. Were you more nervous watching him play or your two sons play now? My sons. My sons. My heart goes out to them when they get hit a lot more than Kurt was tougher. These are my boys. He didn't care as much, huh? <laughs> well, he's just tough. He just was a grown man. These are my boys. All right, a few more. Uh, you're a high school coach. Who do you coach more like, Dick for me or Mike Barnes? Ooh. I, I'm a good mix of both of them. Um, gosh, that's a great question. I do think that you learn from all your coaches, and I would say that I, I do a good job of connecting with people like Coach Vermeil, and I push people really, really hard and challenge them like, like Mike did. 
True or false, Brenda did not let you buy an expensive $6 uh, box of cereal at one time in your relationship. That's false. I didn't want to buy the $6 <laughs> box of cereal for my wife when she was pregnant because I could get the one on sale that was basically the same thing. <laughs> Final question. Give me one sentence. We have a lot of couples watching this. The key to your successful marriage. What's the key? Um, no backing down. No matter what, we're in this together. How about it? I 100% agree. There's no <laughs> options. The only option is to figure it out and to work through it because uh, we started this thing together and we're going to finish this thing together.